also was a broadcaster. Larry, why are pitchers so fragile? He's just getting started, and all of a sudden he's got some sort of shoulder inflammation? Well, I think part of the reason, Michael Patrick, is because we do shut them down after a certain amount of pitches and a certain amount of innings. You know, a starter now, 100 pitches is just about a maximum that they'll let you go. And so you only build your arm up to that point. You start hitting 60, 70 pitches, and they start looking to the bullpen and start getting people ready. So the guys just don't stretch themselves out to get as many innings in. The only organization that really is changing that is the Texas Rangers. And Nolan Ryan down there has started to make his guys stretch it out. They're throwing long distance, 300 feet at a time, and uh, he's really trying to build up their endurance. Yeah, well, I mean, it's no good if he's a great pitcher and he's fragile and can only pitch short spells, but it's a double-edged sword, too, because you don't want to risk wearing him out. Well, he's the franchise. They had said they were going to shut him down at 160 innings anyway, which would have come probably towards the end of August or early September. So all this does is push his timetable back. He'll still get to that 160 innings combined between the minor leagues and the major leagues. So he's just taking himself an extended all-star break. (laughs) <laughs> okay, but that's disappointing to all those people who bought tickets. Very disappointing. Very funny story, though, about uh, his replacement saying that it's like going to see Miss Universe and getting stuck with Miss Iowa. And she threw out the first pitch of the game last night. Miss <laughs> Iowa did. He sent her some flowers. They brought her in, and she threw out the first pitch. <laughs> Oops. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Larry Sorensen, who pitched for seven major, major league teams and uh, is uh, living in Grand Rapids. His son pitches in the minor leagues, too. Uh, Nikki Hale, our world correspondent, just uh, made her grand entrance into the studio here. Speaking of beauty queens, good morning to you. Good morning. <laughs> um, do you know that we have a YouTube? YouTube channel now? Yes, I was aware, yes. MPS and the AM, and, uh, and I was asked earlier this morning, guess what? We have viewers in other countries who are watching our YouTube channel right now. It's MPS and the AM, so you go to YouTube.com and you put in MPS and the AM, and guess what the number one international region watching this program from outside the U.S. is? Um, that's a difficult question. Let me think. Uh, it's yeah. not Thailand, if you're wondering. I was going to say Asia. <laughs> Is it not? <laughs> okay. And it's not um, Amsterdam. I don't know. Germany? It's the United Kingdom. Oh, okay. I didn't so, want to say that because I'm from there, but I guess. <laughs> I got to believe that uh, this is because of you. You think? Yeah. I don't know. Your legions of fans <laughs> are now Just seeing my you. my family. <laughs> this is like when the Beatles came to America, right? Right. And then they made it. Paul McCartney was at the White House this week uh, with President Obama. Yeah. Uh, giving a, I, it was a pretty neat show. I don't know if you watched it or not. I but, didn't uh, see yeah, it, Yeah, they no. were in the East Room there, and he did a performance and this and that kind of thing. And you know what Paul McCartney sang? Michelle. Oh, for well, Michelle yeah, Obama. exactly. That would be very fitting, wouldn't it? He said, I hope the president will forgive me. And he sang that love song, and he said, I might be the first singer ever punched out by a president of the United States. <laughs> but Obama was singing along with Michelle right there in the front row, and it was uh, a kind of cute but also awkward to see. You know what I mean? Was it? Really? Yeah, I thought so. Mm. And he was on The View yesterday, the president. I saw that. How did that go? You know, it's interesting to me because sometimes the decisions that are made at presidential levels worry me. Um, yeah. You know, and, but it's interesting to watch him speak. It's a very calming experience, no matter what the question is, what the topic. He's got such a very well-presented manner. That Do you, you think so? There, oh, gosh, it calmed me. You're Unlike, kidding. I was listening to Virg Bonero on, on your interview this morning, yeah. and I said to Troy, gosh, did I need coffee? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like a second dose of caffeine. But he gets you all ramped up. Right, whereas Obama has a, a, an opposite effect on me. I'm thinking to myself, gosh, are things really going the right way? And I'm sitting there, oh, you know, maybe they are. <laughs> but I disagree with you. I think that President Obama is very plotting and very really? deliberate in his delivery. Uh, wow. That he's looking, to me, he's like a guy who's crossing a river and he's looking at the next rock to step on okay. so that he doesn't slip when he chooses his words. Wow. I feel I can see the gears going and it seems manufactured. That's just Could my be. opinion. No, I'm not talking now, he politically. Was on the view with yeah. you know women, so maybe that's the influence that it had on me. You know, it's a little bit different. And they were talking children and talking you mm-hmm. know marriage and some. Was he relaxed? Things. Very relaxed. Yeah. He was. I mean, Elizabeth Hasselbeck really had a go at him, and she was very upset. Well, yeah, she's uh, obviously a Republican, you can tell, and she mm-hmm. just went straight after him. But I mean, at the end of the day, he was trying to uh, get, I guess, get votes and confidence back on what he's doing, and. You're not going to be making everybody happy. It's just never the way, is it? Well, let's Can't see. Now, everyone. Obama goes on The View to court female voters, presumably, because mm-hmm. it's an all-female cast. And Virg Bonero has 60 women going around on a bus yesterday. <laughs> everybody knows where the power is then, huh? Right, exactly. And I'm nothing against Virg. It's just interesting to hear the whole... <gasps> 
Yeah. You know, and I said, Troy said I didn't need caffeine this morning. <laughs> yeah, but who do you want in your corner fighting for you? Oh, somebody who's got a lot of energy. energy. That's like I am. I'm a very energetic person. So. Here's the song that Paul McCartney sang for President Obama and his wife at the White House. Thank you, Nikki. Mm-hmm. 